Uh, good morning. And I'd like to thank everyone for being with us here today uh, to talk about a very, very important issue to many people across the state of Connecticut. In this season of thanks, we should be really thanking individuals for what they do on a daily basis to help solve what I think is one of the most important issues in the state of Connecticut, and that is helping our seniors age in place. But in order to do that, not only do we need to have the requisite services, but we have to have the quality labor to deliver those services. After all, human services depends on human services. And if we don't have quality labor to deliver those services and that labor be adequately compensated, guess what? Our human services suffer. And what we're talking about here when we're talking about these human services are vulnerable individuals, be they the IDD community or seniors. These are people dependent on others in order to make it through their day. We're also talking about the people who deliver the services because those are individuals that live beyond themselves. They have woke up every single day, went to work through a historic pandemic, and made sure that these vulnerable individuals had the services that they need to remain independent, living at home with dignity. To know that our state appropriated one, a 1.7% 1 increase last June, and yet today, those dollars have still not hit the street is infuriating. It's infuriating when you look at the human toll that it's going to cost on the individuals in need. They're depending on this. And yet, today we still don't have that money that's been allocated to this cause on the street helping those individuals in need. This is 2021. I can't imagine a department not being able to work this through a system and if the system isn't responding, then the system is broken and needs to be fixed. That comes with leadership. That's why we're here today. We have individuals in Connecticut that depend on us to make sure that these initiatives get over the line. It started with the appropriation, but now we need to have results. These results are important. They are life-changing. I can go into any nursing home, I can go into any community center, I can go into just about any event and ask who wants to go into a nursing home. Nobody raises their hands. And when they do, it's, it's few and far between. What do people want? They want to remain at home. They want to age in place with dignity. And the thing about it is that's about one third of the cost of institutional care but our system is wired to force people towards institutional choices. And that needs to change. That needs to be heard by leadership in Hartford. And it's why we're here today. So we have a few people with us. I'd like to now turn it over uh, to Senator Paul Formica who works with me on a number of these issues. He gets it just like I get it. Uh, he's also co-chairman of the IDD caucus, uh, and he would like to share a few words. Good morning. First, I'd like to thank all the providers for signing on with us and joining us here today, but most importantly for the good work that they do each and every day, 24 hours a day supporting those most vulnerable here in our state. Home care workers enable some of the most vulnerable residents to remain in their homes, age in place, and stay in the communities. They provide care, medical services, they provide meals, and everyday assistance to help people live life 
to the fullest that they can. As co-chair of the IDD caucus, I have seen how caregivers can give love, compassion, commitment, and the dedication that they serve. They give so much of themselves to help others stay safe, healthy, and live life with dignity. Like many, the pandemic has also created unprecedented challenges for caregivers and especially for the people they care for. The providers here today with us know that better than anyone. They want to do all they can to support their workers and support the people that their workers care for each and every day. Shining a light on this delay in a very important rate increase, a much needed rate increase, an already approved rate increase, we need to see action. We hope to see this move forward swiftly. We call on those people responsible for moving this to move it today. And if the system allows for this kind of delay, as Senator Kelly said, it's time to change the system. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, I'd like to now welcome to the podium Mario Dequila of Assisted Living Services, Inc. Hello, everyone. Um, really, my message is short and sweet. <clears throat> um, we've been a provider uh, for the state of Connecticut uh, for non-medical home care for over 25 years, operating a, a family-owned uh, non-medical home care agency. And essentially, we need this rate increase to ensure that our clients' needs are taken care of at the highest level. Uh, since July, we've been paying our staff more to, to provide the best care possible to our clients. Um, and our staff should earn more. And we need this funding to ensure that they get what they deserve. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mario. Uh, I'd now like to welcome Jonah Francis from Pansy Home, Home Care. Yes, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Jonah Francis with Pansy Home Care. And much like Mario, my message is also very short and brief. Um, so we've been in service now for eight years, uh, helping the Hartford County, and we feel as though it's only right for this increase to happen as immediate as possible so we can continue to help our families, our clients, and our care providers. Being able to staff our clients has been the main issue of concern for all care providers throughout the entire United States, and Connecticut is no different. And even though things are not what they were last year, as we all know it, we are still in the midst of what we call the caregiver crisis. Agencies must meet our employees' demands, which includes better hours, better work environments, and also better pay. And agencies are striving to do so, however we do need, and all we are asking for is our state, as well as DSS, to also do its part. I think we all agree here that our care providers are, should be paid way more than minimum wage, and that's just not enough for employees that are trained and experienced. But unfortunately, without being able to get the raises that we need, it's gonna make it very tough for us to do so. Here is an example of just why this is important. The companion reimbursement rate in Connecticut is currently $16.88. Minimum wage is $13, leaving us with $3.88 to pay for things like employee taxes, workers' compensation, um, overhead, training, insurance, and the list goes on and on, including office staff. So again, we urge those to continue to follow the lead of these two wonderful senators and getting our uh, message approved, getting the, in um, the reimbursement rates across, um, that should have been effective since January, uh, since July 1st. Again, Jonah Francis with Pansy Home Care Service. Thank you very much, Jonah. Uh, next, we have Cheryl Rosenbaum from Caring Connection Adult Daycare Health Center. Thank you, Senator. Good morning. 
I am Cheryl Rosenbaum, and I'm the coordinator of the Caring Connection Adult Day Center in Windsor, Connecticut, and I am a member of the Connecticut Association of Adult Day Health Centers. We keep our elderly, your mothers, your fathers, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles in the community safe with purposeful activity and a meaningful life under the care of nurses and CNAs and activity directors every day they attend our program. Throughout the pandemic, several adult day centers had to close. This is due to the fact that things have changed. We can help fewer people in larger spaces due to social distancing. We wear masks every day. We provide purposeful activity, nursing services, and good nutrition, allowing our seniors to have a life that is purposeful. That is most important. Throughout the pandemic, as I said, many adult day centers closed. We worked tirelessly to stay open. We received $74.74 a day, $74.74 a day. That includes transporting our clients to our program, as well as paying for all of that staff that work tirelessly with love and caring hands to care for our elderly, our most vulnerable, the people who came before us and are the reason that we are here today. We need those increased costs that were promised to us as of July 1st. Please make this happen so that we can provide this kind of care to our clients. Together with all the other home and community-based caregivers up here with me, we urge you to speak out and to make this happen. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, and last is Patty Newton Foster of Newton Foster Home Care. Good morning, everyone. My name is Patty Newton Foster with Newton Foster Home Care Agency. Two locations, one in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and one in New Haven, Connecticut. I am fortunate enough to own and operate a training center for CNA, EKG, and phlebotomy where I can pull the aids into the homes. Um, not like every agency. It's very hard today to get people to work because of the unemployment and the other things that are being offered to them. And it's very hard to get staff to go into the homes now because the clients don't want anyone to come in because of COVID and the aides don't want to go in because of COVID. But at the end of the day, everyone that's staying out here, you may be 65 or older because those are the clients that we serve and maybe one day you may need this service. It's very, very important to want to know who's going to take care of you when you can't take care of yourself. So that's why we have the agencies on aging and SWACA and all the other agencies providing for seniors. We are talking about seniors here. No one wants to be in a convalescent home. Just go, take a, go into one and you'll see that's not where you want to live. So we need the funding to pay our employees, to pay for the rent, to pay for things that we need to service our clients. So I'm asking and I'm begging you guys to listen to us because one day you may be in these shoes where you need someone to take care of you. So please, please legislators, please governor, anyone that has anything to do with the funding getting to us, we waited long enough. We need to stay alive. We need to keep people home where they want to be. It's nothing like being home and someone coming in to take care of you. It's a relationship that you grow with the client. So it's just not a factory work. This is not peace work. These are people's lives. And I beg of you to help us help others. Uh, thank you very much, Patty. Uh, and thank all uh, of the folks who spoke, uh, Cheryl, Patty, Mario, and Jonah, uh, what they have just told are the stories of how not only important this is, 
but how difficult it is to deliver this service on the reimbursement rate as it is. And what is ending up happening is that without these needed increases, we start to lose providers. And that, that is a shame. Whenever we talk about health care, and you heard a lot about it when we talked the Affordable Care Act, there were three promises. We were going to make sure it's affordable. This is affordable. It's about one-third the cost of institutional care. It's where Connecticut needs to be. It's where people want to be. Why aren't we there? It's not only affordable, but there were other, two other pro promises. The two other promises of the Affordable Care Act were access and quality. This 1.7 across the board rate increase goes to both of those issues. And you just heard it. If we don't provide this increase to the providers, we don't have the providers in the field delivering the service. That impacts access. It limits people's choice to live at home. And as far as quality, as I started, human services needs human services. And in order to make sure you get the best human services and the best labor, you got to pay for it. We need an increase to make sure that we deliver on those promises of affordable health care, but also accessible home care and quality labor to deliver those services. That's what we're here standing talking about today. Connecticut can do better. Let's start by getting this across the line. Thank you for all you do and being here with us this morning. I can. Well, you know, when, when the governor and the majority want to act and move, uh, they do so. Uh, there's no reason why we don't need an executive order to hold a public hearing. We have public hearings on uh, grants and DSS appropriations all the time. Uh, I don't understand why we just haven't gotten this ball in play and move it along so that we get the services where they need to be. They're working, they're, they're claiming that DSS is working with CMS uh, to get the funding and to get things in, in place to do this. Well, I think any, you know, anybody that leaves the home care field is a loss to Connecticut. It's a loss to our general fund. But the fact of the matter is it's a loss to the people in need. And that's where we need to focus, is that there are people that are depending on these services. And when they don't have these services, they are at risk, at risk to themselves, at risk to their health, at risk to being institutionalized. The failure to act, and here we are, this was approved in June. We're six months later, and we're no further along in the process. But what we are further along is more people at risk. And that is unacceptable. We need to make sure that our seniors have the ability and the choice to stay at home and to age in place with independence and dignity. That's what the whole intent of this legislation was. And the fact that it hasn't happened is just unbelievable. Unbelievable. This should have been, they should have been getting on this back in, in, in July 1. And what they'll say is, well, it's retroactive. But as we know in Medicaid, assistance delayed is assistance denied, especially in home care. And that's what's happening here. So we need that money now, not next summer. 